During, again, the, the beginning of this time of lockdown, this was a poem that, um, that I held very close. And it's a poem by Dom Helder Camera. Put your ear to the ground and listen. Hurried, worried footsteps. Bitterness, rebellion. Hope hasn't yet begun. Listen again. Put out feelers. The Lord is there. He is far less likely to abandon us in hardship than in times of ease. And I just love those words, all of it, but especially listen. Listen again. Put out those feelers. Put out those feelers in faith. Some of you may know that during this time of lockdown, again at the beginning, I, um, I did a, a virtual pilgrimage. Well, it wasn't virtual, it was a kind of a replicated pilgrimage. Um, I was meant to be going to Glen Lock last summer, but that was obviously can cancelled. So I, I walked that pilgrimage of Glen Lock around my neighbourhood of Daly City. And I did, you know, a, a kind of a circuit each day for about two weeks or so. And this was the poem that really um, was moving me and was holding me and was guiding me in that pilgrimage. As I started off each day, it was, those words came to me, listen, listen again, put out feelers. It was about noticing. So I think, you know, as, as we begin this nine days of retreat, maybe this poem can kind of lead that repetitiveness of each day. Listen, listen again, put out feelers. What is it that you notice? Let's slow down. Let's slow down and feel. Listen with your heart. Listen with your body. Listen with that ears of faith. Maybe just even just slowing down with our senses. What is it that we physically hear? What is it that we physically see with our eyes? When I was doing that pilgrimage, suddenly this place that I was so familiar with, I was noticing all sorts of things, noticing the poppies that were beginning to bloom, noticing the snail that met me on the road, noticing a Celtic cross that I'd never seen before, and I'd been walking around that, that, um, that circuit for already probably a week now, noticing the beautiful pink flowers that were blooming. Noticing, let us slow down. Let us notice. Let us notice the ways that wisdom is uh, with us, that wisdom is leading us. One of the, the exercises that I wanted to invite us into in, in this day, and maybe you can continue it for these days of retreat, is something called the pilgrimage of the eye. And um, we probably know a little bit about the tradition of pilgrimage, um, going to the Holy Land or these different sites, but it's this, that physical being able to go, you know, it's the importance of the walk-in um, to that particular physical space. Other forms of pilgrimage might be the Stations of the Cross, so we can't go to the Holy Land, but we can be doing that, that walk-in um, where we are. Maybe another pilgrimage is, is the Labyrinth. Um, this was used by, by some of these early monks in the, in the early medieval times of, yeah, we can't go on pilgrimage, but we can replicate that, walking in this way, in this, in this labyrinth. And there's another kind of replicated pilgrimage which is called the pilgrimage of the eye. And it's inviting us to, um, to look at all these paths, to follow with our eye. And it could also be a pilgrimage maybe, you know, with our finger moving, following those, those knots. This is from uh, the Mark, Mark's Gospel in the Lindisfarne um, manuscript. And as, we, as we're celebrating St. Patrick's Day, I just wanted to bring some of this Celtic artwork to us. But this pilgrimage of the eye can be a way of, of guiding our time of retreat, our time of prayer. Maybe a way of being able to connect with how we're feeling or a way of connecting um, with what this year has been or a way of connecting with uh, 
the way that God has been present, or maybe you felt that God hasn't been present, but just say this way of, of, of walking, walking <laughs> in pilgrimage. When I was doing my, um, and just, sorry as well, what I'm gonna do, I've, you may have already seen, but I'm gonna send some examples out in the email that maybe you can print out and have with you in this time of retreat, you know, and just to, to follow these eternal knots, this, these eternal knot works that is not just um, one, di di one dimensional, but goes deeper and deeper. Where does this, where do these paths lead you? When I was doing my, um, my pilgrimage around Daly City, um, this is not from uh, St. Patrick, but it's uh, from another Irish saint, St. Kevin. It's the Market Cross at Glendalock, where I was meant to be going to. And so one of my prayer exercises was drawing this cross, um, kind of life-size, on, on, on our shed that we have outside in our garden. And I was really excited to start drawing this, and I was you know, drawing and tracing the, the, the knot work here. But I think by the second day, I was so frustrated, and I was realized I was getting angry. Um, it was too difficult to be drawing this knot work. I couldn't figure it out, I couldn't work it out. But I also think that was this reflection of both the beauty and the anger. Oftentimes we can look at this artwork of like, this is so beautiful, and it is beautiful, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't hold hardship, and it doesn't hold pain, and it doesn't hold grief. When I was walking that pilgrimage, it was the experience of both the, the, the beauty, the noticing, and that pain and the grief. So as we kind of enter into this prayer, this first day, it's about slowing down, it's about noticing, it's about being present. It's about maybe touching what you've lived and haven't had time to maybe to, to, um, to touch or be aware of or bring into prayer or let God touch. It's to give space. So this, this exercise may be just, a, be just a way of slowing down, of giving space to what we've lived in this year. One of the um, exercises, again, with this pilgrimage of the eye that I'd like us to, to, to do, if it feels right, is to pray with St. Patrick's breastplate. And this is probably, you know, again, something that's very familiar. It's the, the, the song which, you know, Christ be beside me, Christ be before me, Christ be within me, to my left, to my right. But it's bigger than that as well. It's the, it begins with, I arise today. And there's a song that I'm sure I've shared with some of you as well, this beautiful song um, by Sean Davey and sung by Rita Connolly. Um, so St. Pat Patrick's breastplate was not written by St. Patrick. It was written, you know, 200 or so years later. But it's, it's attributed to him. It's, it holds his spirituality, his heart. And I think, you know, in one way, as we were talking about, St. Patrick, who held the beautiful in his heart. That, although we know that this was not specifically written by him, we can imagine him singing this, this uh, song or saying or singing this prayer how did Patrick arise each day in that darkness? And I think this experience of his prayer captures that. So I want us just to listen to the song first of all, and it's not the whole prayer, and then to, to look at the different parts of the prayer. I rise today through the strength of heaven Light of sun, radiance of moon, splendor of fire, speed of lightning, swiftness of wind, depth of the sea, stability of earth, firmness of rock. I Day. Through God's strength to pilot me, God's eye to look before me, God's wisdom 
to guide me, God's way to lie before me, God's shield to protect me. From all who shall wish me ill, afar and near, alone and in a multitude, against just this song this prayer is such a beautiful prayer that we can allow to guide us in this day so as I say if it helps to to have that pilgrimage the pilgrimage of of the eye to print out one of those Celtic knots that I've sent you and just to pray this prayer as you are either tracing with your finger or looking with your eye or if you're able to maybe to go out and walk a labyrinth or create your own um, pilgrimage or walk for today but this prayer of Patrick he was able to arise he was able to hold that beauty first of all through the mighty strength through the experience of God, of the Trinity. That's the source, that's the hope, and that's the beginning of all. The sanctuary light is lit. He's able to arise through the strength, through the memory, through connecting, through through, um, recalling Christ. His birth, to be present with him in his baptism in those waters, through coming close to him at the cross, through that dying, through the rising, and through Christ's own in that great tradition of descending into hell and lifting us up. In those many ways that we recall, we remember, we pray, Um, the life of Christ that is where we draw strength from that is how we're able to arise that again is the sanctuary lights lit 
Patrick's able to arise through, and this is a beautiful, a beautiful um, stanza of this prayer, through the love of the cherubim, the obedience of angels, the service of archangels, in the hope of resurrection, in the prayers of patriarchs, patriarchs, in the prediction of prophets, in the preaching of the apostles, in the faith of confessors, in the innocence of holy virgins, in the deeds of the righteous. It's like this litany, all of this is a litany. We don't stand by ourselves. We stand and we hold this great memory of our forebearers in faith, the men, the women. We stand in the strength and we're able to arise in the strength and of, as well of our, of our own ancestors. So many holy men and women that are not these famous saints, but when we recall them, there's like that holding on to that beauty in our heart. As you trace that, that uh, pilgrimage, that labyrinth, that eternal you know, Celtic knot, who do you remember? Who gives you strength? Whose love do you draw from? And Patrick is able to arise today through the strength, through God's presence in creation. And I think how many of us can, can relate to this? The strength of heaven, the light of the sun, the radiance of moon, the splendor of fire, the speed of lightning, the swiftness of wind, the depth of the sea, the stability of earth, the firmness of rock. And maybe we can add our own. The grandeur of the sequoias, the ancientness of the redwoods, the hugeness of the Pacific, the rolling of the hills and the mountains, the grandeur of the bears, of the elks. What would be your prayer? What would you write? How have you found that beauty of God in creation? All of creation expresses and reveal something of God to us. I arise today through God's strength to pilot me, God's might to uphold me, God's wisdom to guide me. As we draw, as we trace that pilgrimage, those knots, how have we felt God guiding me, God's wisdom leading me, God's word speaking to me, God's hand protecting me. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my left, Christ on my right, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ in the heart of all who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of all who speaks of me, Christ in the eye of all who see me, Christ in the ear of all who hear me. So I invite you as this, however your day uh, is gonna be unfolding, and maybe it's simply to take different parts of this prayer, not to pray all of it, or that reading from wisdom that, it was, that I shared at the beginning, or to say simply just to sit with Patrick and to be with him, to sit with Jesus and to allow Jesus or Mother Mary or Lady Wisdom, or Godfather, however God is reaching out to you in this moment, to allow yourself to be held, to be loved, and to be led. Be still and know I am God. Be still and know still and 